This city is a hustle right now. Everywhere you are, there's the sound of vehicles. Uh, and right around the lake, the pitter-patter of joggers' feet and dogs running along and, and you know, bicycles whizzing by. And then as you enter onto the water, you know, today was a very calm day, so the water was just glass the entire way out. And, and all of a sudden we're floating on a lake, still surrounded by all of that hustle and bustle, but the, the heavy sound of it, the sound that you can feel, just slowly sort of diminishing. Paddling out, I can see the island, and as, as you float up towards it, everything behind you is gone. I had absolutely never heard of Snake Island. I know it was once referred to as Picnic Island in a couple of articles I've seen. So I don't know if maybe, maybe there was a time when it was more well-traveled. I think Florida has it bad. Snake Island has every species of venomous snake known to any Texan, even vipers out here. You know, maybe it's called Snake Island just for the reason that I'm trying to sell the snakes on this island is so that um, not too many people come out here. This is a natural grow zone. I mean, looking at the, the tree species that we've got here, it's predominantly hackberry, but along the outer edge of the island, which is pretty steep on most, most spots, uh, which makes it difficult to get on, we see some cypress are taking root. We're getting to see an entire cycle of vegetation go from what would it be when it was just bare dirt and left alone uh, and just to grow naturally. You can also just see little moments from the past where people have painted trees or put in a pole for something or, you know, had a, a small little fire pit. And it is, it is really just like being on sacred ground. And in fact, walking around here, we came upon a memorial. I mean, this place is, is that type of place. Lady Bird Lake uh, was created by the damming of the Colorado River in a couple of different stages. There was an early dam upstream, a series of dams upstream, the Austin Dam, um, that's now the Tom Miller Dam. Then in 1960, the Longhorn Dam was completed. Part of the purpose was to control flooding. Some of it was uh, to cool the Holly power plant and the Seaholm power plant. And then there was mention also of, you know, beautifying the lake in the city. Previously, there had been some gravel mining operations operating along that part of the uh, river. And those operations, capital aggregates especially, was hired by the city to basically continue its operations, mining gravel out of the river, but to do it in a way that would help dredge the lake out so that the storm water would be taken care of more efficiently, and then also to make the shoreline more approachable and accessible for people. Back in the 1940s, this was just uh, an alluvial plain. It was just sand and gravel. And at some point, they dug out what we consider the basin at the downstream end of Lady Bird Lake and left, for whatever weird reason, this little patch of land. There is sort of this driver to be respectful of this place because you realize it is delicate, it is small, it can't handle too much. Just our presence impacts it. My presence here, your presence here, and those of you know, previous people. You can see pathways that are all around here, and there's, there's a bank where there's a rope swing, and uh, that whole bank is just completely eroded away. And I'm in no way saying don't play on the rope swing. I mean, uh, I very likely would too. But the more people you have here, the more impact you have, uh, and, and the harder it is for it to recover. And there's plenty of fun that can be had here without destroying this place.